let us start this chapter uh, in the earlier cities with a story. Story means it's a fact what happened. Almost 150 years, 150 years back uh, in Punjab, in East, what is now in a part of Pakistan now, in Larkana district, uh, people, the railway uh, track was been laid by the Indian railway. Now, they need a lot and huge number of uh, bricks to make those railway tracks, the lay, layer down. So, they opened an auction and they uh, offered uh, to the common villagers, the common people there, that those who will be supplying those bricks, they can bring and uh, railway used to buy, purchase it. Now, uh, surprisingly, some of them, they noticed that a huge number of bricks, a very common villages, they are, they are bringing a huge number of bricks, even full of the bullock carts, and they are selling it for easy money. That was becoming the process, the way to get easy money from, uh, by, um, for the local villages. These actually attract interest of the archaeologist. They started searching, they started thinking about that. They found that from where the common villagers, they are finding those bricks. Because the main thing in those bricks were, they are not freshly made bricks. They are not freshly burned bricks. Rather, they were quite old. While asked, when the, these archae the, the archaeologists, they asked these villagers, they got the answer that, there is a mound of dead people and uh, there is a Buddha stupa there and nearby areas are full of bricks. So people they are just digging the earth, they are getting those bricks and they are selling it out to the railways. Unfortunately by the time these archaeologists they reached at that location, the upper layer of those, uh, the uh, layer of the uh, magnificent civilization, the upper layer bricks all washed away for building the railway tracks and uh, people uh, they had no idea exactly what they are doing they call this place as mound of death because lots of dead when they are get, getting the those bricks along with that they got the parts of skeletons or the bones so they started calling as mohenjodaro at the same time in harappan area also the same thing happened. Uh, first, these people, they reached, the archaeologists, they reached Harappa and Harappa was the city that was dug first. So, we call this civilization as Harappan civilization. It had another name also. We call it as Indas Valley civilization because first the two cities, they uh, actually honored them. The two cities was where Harappa and Mahanjadaro. And people started thinking that this is the only place where the civilization was concentrated. So, as both the cities, both the places were uh, in, uh, in the banks of Indus, we started calling it as Indus Valley Civilization. But later on, now we have got evidences that many other places also at the same time under the same civilization grew up many other places in India also we got evidences that they have continuous connection or the same way even those areas also flourished. Then uh, we have given the name for this civilization by the name of the first dug place that is Harappa and we call it as Harappan civilization. It was almost uh, 70 years uh, uh, took by the archaeologists to get this idea that it is a part of a magnificent civilization. Almost 150 years back people started taking uh, bricks from there and another 70 years passed to find the actual place to, uh, to get the decision that this is, the, this is one of the uh, we can say the most uh, magnificent dignified civilization of the world that we need to protect and after that only government started protecting that place. Now, what is special here? We discussed about that people started settling down in villages like Mehergar, like Daujali Harding. We have find that tribes, they are settling down in villages. 
Harappan civilization, mostly the Manjadaro area, it was not at all a village, rather it was a flourished full grown city. The entire city was divided into two parts, one is citadel, another one is lower town. So depending on the occupation and the profession of people, the city was divided into like this. The upper part or the citadel was mostly for the people, those who are in administration, the king or the ruler, those who are the administrator for them or the rich people. And the lower part was mostly mentioned for the uh, people, those who are uh, busy in agriculture or in um, some other occupation. Now the bricks, whatever we have seen that, the bricks were so well made, the way they have made it, that the interlocking pattern they used to make the city, that was really overwhelming. We cannot even think that our civilization that grew up more than 4500 years ago, they have that such a well built city at that point of time when the other part of the world we can even claim that they are passing their neolithic age. These Indas Valley people at this point of time they entered in their Chalcolithic age. They have invented, uh, discovered um, copper and the same time they invented various ways to use copper to use metals. Not only copper, copper and bronze. So they entered in Chalcolithic age and they developed a well built city at Mahanjodaro. Some of the, in some of the cities, uh, the, the buildings, mostly the buildings what we find that was built in the citadel area. Down uh, town or the lower town that was made by, made as a row houses where common people they used to live. But this row houses also as uh, they were affected by flood many a time, we can find that they are two storied building. That in the upper story, whenever it is a time for flood, people can stay there. There was a concept of roof where uh, maybe in the uh, warm season, in the uh, summer time, people used to rest. And mostly all the houses, we can found their own well, big, huge wells, brick made wells, which are the continue, which provide the continuous water supply to the people, their own uh, wells. And these uh, ro roads were, the streets were well made and they were crossed, they're, they're, they were crossed in a way that there must not be any traffic jam, that's the way that was planned and it was made by tar. N none of the houses faced the road because they felt like that the way they can block the road, rather the other side they used uh, to open the, have the uh, opening of the houses. The bricks, uh, the house was uh, made by bricks coated with plaster, beautifully decorated and some of the places, the way they develop that really creates surprise even today that how in those days before so many years ago, people thought like that and they develop a scientific model of a city in India. Now, now we will be discussing about the uh, drainage system. Drainage system was, Indus Valley drainage system was one of the most modified drainage system which they used. All the drains they were covered and a regular interval using water supply they used to wash all this drainage. There were no clotting or blockage system in the drainage. They are not allowed to throw garbages in the open drain and for garbage collection also they have their own um, machinery that can throw garbage outside of the uh, city area. And even in the, uh, we can see that in uh, uh, Mahanjadaro or in the, the, the cities develop in this period of time, the drainage system, they are interlinked with a septic tank. So whatever the waste material that also used to flow in the major, in a major river or in a major water body that can help the city to keep clean and flawless. Next we are coming after the drainage system, we are, uh, now we are discussing about great bath and great granary. 
great bath is a magnificent architectural uh, building we can see uh, in mahenjodaro it has a it was a place where people can come and uh, take to, uh, relaxation there in, in the um, uh, it was it was a modified you can say that now it is the swimming pool what you can see all your apartments and you are using them it was a type of a swimming pool we can find that many rooms they made at the side of the great bath which give us the proof that these people they were very much beauty conscious not even not only the bathing purpose they used the great bath but at the same time they also used these rooms to change their dress or to uh, dress up in some other way even some professionals uh, uh, used to be there for oil massage or to give some beauty uh, help whatever they need there that was the way the city was developed the great bath we can find that every day the water that they uh, the the water that was stored in the bath area the pool area that used to flush out we using four major drains that was attached with the great bath so every time the water was recycled they are getting fresh water for taking bath this was the can you imagine the a city a civilization that developed in such a way that uh, they, that's not only a covered swimming pool that also that made by mortar and uh, completely covered with plasters a beautiful swimming pool even today if any time you get time to visit uh, east pakistan you can visit mahenjodaro and you can have a glimpse of great, great bath as it is now an uh, heritage site and people are protecting this coming to the great granary that was a place where these people they used to keep their granage granages whatever the extra cereal the grain the grains they used to uh, save those grains in this granary and uh, as i told you that this was the time when people were getting their food by a central administration so the extra food what they are uh, keeping in the grain uh, in the great granary that used to help them at the time when they are losing food food grains like at the time of flood or any natural calamity the thing what we find here the great granary was built in a way that they cannot it cannot be affected by flood because mahenjodaro is a place which was commonly flooded area which was situated in a commonly flooded area so the great granary they made in a way that in the upper they, they it, it has four it was a four storied building and using a will they used to keep all those grains stored in the upper store that they cannot be harmed by any natural calamities the door for the great granary that was opened in a narrow lane that in case of any foreign invasion or some other tribes if they are coming to get their stored grain it will be not it will not be easy for them to come in a narrow lane and to get those grains so it many way they planned in uh, in such a way that these grains what they are storing they are storing for future If you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus